Hi, I'm Kristen Burt for Red Carpet Report, and we are here for night one of the Creative Arts Emmys. Hi, 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 hi. Right here, don't move. Um, wow, I saw this documentary, and she is such a complicated person, personality. I always thought that she was innocent going through all of this, but she's not that simple like, gosh, she seems like she's so innocent because it felt like during when the, the investigation, she did some things that were a little bit puzzling. Were you guys discovering all of that when you were working on the documentary? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think that part of making the film was trying to understand these people, right? And Amanda is someone who's been analyzed all over the world by millions and millions of people. And what we found really fascinating was the way in which, depending on, you know, discussions that we would have on, you know, what would we do in that moment? What would you do in that moment? You know, that's really what started to happen with every single person that we talked to in the way that they see Amanda. I, we, we, we called it like the Kuleshov effect. There's this old film technique, which is basically like you can project the emotion and how you feel onto someone else's face. And that's actually what Amanda Knox kind of became is that because of the way that people analyzed her behavior or saw it as strange or saw it as normal, depending on which side you were on, you know, you could kind of come to whatever conclusion you wanted. And that as a jumping off point for a film we thought was really, really fascinating. It gets it much more than an innocence or guilt question. It gets it kind of how do all of us process our feelings about what's in front of us? How do we come to conclusions? How do we make decisions? That's like such a bigger thing than just a single court case. It is one of those things. It's like telling someone how to handle stress or telling someone this is how you're supposed to grieve. She did it in a way that probably was puzzling to a lot of us, but I was like, I don't think she did any of this because the case was so messy to begin with. Yeah, I think what we found too is that once a narrative gets set in place, so once you're told somebody's guilty, you then look at them through the lens of that forever and ever. And all, not just Amanda, but everyone involved had, uh, was, was reacting to the way that people felt about them based on the stories that had been constructed. So everybody actually felt like they'd been misunderstood or, or hadn't been considered and their positions hadn't been considered. And so we wanted to make a story that was, again, not about guilt or innocence, but what was it like for anybody to be caught up in the in a story like this and then to be turned into entertainment for the world, you know, for the better part of a decade. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm, I'm going to throw out is the Italian prosecutor. I don't know if that was his title. Yeah. yeah. Holy cow. I was like screaming at my television set watching him because to me, he was the one. I was like, you're the one like putting, you know, lighting the match to the, all the gasoline. That's how I felt. Well, I think the thing that was really, the other really interesting thing about this story is you have these this collision of different worldviews. So you have a young American girl from Seattle, a very liberal part of the United States, and she goes to study in a Roman Catholic traditional small town in the countryside in Italy, in Perugia. And Giuliano Menini is, you know, a family man who has four daughters, who attends church regularly, who has a, perhaps a different set of values and a different set of beliefs than Amanda does. And then you have the, the victim, Meredith Kircher, who tragically lost her life, and she comes from the UK. And then you have Rafael Celestino, who's Amanda's boyfriend, who's an Italian guy. And so you have this collision of forces. And I think that was this, that was the really interesting thing for us. If you go to Italy, you might see Amanda in the different light and see Menini as the kind of normal one. And, and that idea, trying to bridge those gaps between people was really interesting to us. Yeah, we wanted everyone around the world to be able to watch the film and understand who these individuals were. But again, and to be able to find the version of the truth that they wanted to believe. The facts are the facts, but if, you know, we understand that some people might feel differently. How did you get Amanda to trust you? Because I've got to imagine her trust level for just about everyone right now is about here. Yeah, well, we made the film over six years. It's been now seven, seven years, years, I guess, yeah. since we started making it. And so, honestly, the way that we got her to trust us was we backed off. So we had we'd begun talking to her in 2011 about it, and she didn't want to make a film. And we really kind of abandoned the project entirely. Rod and I both went on to work on other things. And then we got a call three years later from her, and she had basically changed her mind. And I think that there were a couple of things that, that factored into that. One was she was facing reconviction. And so I think that she hadn't found a way to get her side of the story out, and she wanted to speak. Um, and she had already done traditional news interviews. And then I think the other thing was that, um, I don't know, I think she liked that we didn't pressure her. Yeah. And that was the same thing with Menini. We spent a year, 18 months, probably yeah. after Amanda signed on, trying to get him to agree. And we didn't actually start really making the film until both sides agreed to be in it. 
Wow. I'm going to imagine people at cocktail parties probably pull you guys into a corner now because I could probably sit down with you for probably about an hour and go, okay, what about... Because it really was one of those things you just kind of want to debate, and I was screaming at, at my television set in reaction to a lot of things that were said. So congratulations, because that's what you want. You want reaction. And uh, wishing you the best tonight. Thank you, Thank you, very you so much. much. Thank you for Thanks. having us. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and in the comments below, let us know what your favorite TV moment was this year.